I am Ros Rees, the Senior Project Officer with the Agriculture Unit of Workplace Health and Safety Queensland, your facilitator for today. Thank you for joining us for today's session, which will be going through the fifth element of the safety management system, reporting safety. Please send any questions through at any time during the webinar and we will endeavour to answer them at the end. A short survey will pop up at the end of the webinar. Please take a few minutes to complete this as it provides us with valuable feedback. Your presenter for today is Brenton Garlick, the Senior Project Officer in Compliance and Business Engagement Unit of Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. Over to you, Brenton. Thanks, Roz. And welcome again to everyone for our fifth webinar in this series. Uh, before we start on today's topic, let's just briefly recap on the last session which we went through, and that is induction, training and supervision. So to summarise induction, training and supervision, you need to make sure that you do the following. You need to establish a safety induction process for all workers. Review training periodically. Provide task specific training and provide adequate supervision. Make sure you assess your workers' competence, as well as enforce all your procedures. And keep induction and training records, identify any gaps in your training and supervision, and make sure that you're always continually improving your training as well. It's also important to remember that contractors and seasonal labour hire workers should also be treated the same as any full-time worker. Be especially aware of young, inexperienced workers and those with limited English. Make sure that they understand the information you are providing and you might need to look at different ways of pre presenting the information such as photos, diagrams, short films and even having the information sheets translated into other languages. And you also need to make sure that they feel secure and confident to come to you and ask questions and report anything to you as well. So on to the next step in the safety management system and today's topic, as you can see on the slide there in front of you, that's number five and it's all about reporting safety. Now reporting safety issues is a very important part in your workplace. There are those incidents which you are required to tell us about under the legislation and we refer to these as notifiable incidents. These notifiable incidents have definitions and we will go through these definitions shortly. It is also important to report and record internally any other incidents and near misses that may not be deemed to be notifiable to Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. There are many reasons for this, including if an incident is to then escalate at a later date to one of the notifiable incidents, then you're going to want to have all the information that, uh, as possible to make sure that you can provide that information and report it to Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. If you have a spike in a specific incident or near miss, then this can also prompt you to relook at safe work procedures, which we covered in the webinar, Safe Systems of Work. You may find that there is an error in the procedure or in the human behaviours, or you may find that there is just a better way of performing the task. You may even find fault with a piece of machinery and need to have this fixed or replaced. So like all of the safety topics so far, we have a checklist for reporting safety. This has been sent to you by email prior to the webinar. However, it is available on the website and if you've not been able to get that, we will make sure that we send this to you after today's webinar as well. So on the screen, you can now see a screenshot of what this checklist looks like. So this checklist will give you a good indication about where you sit with your reporting inside the workplace. As always, not all questions on this checklist will be relevant to your business, but it will give you a good idea of what you are doing well and what you may need to work on. This checklist is also in a Word format, so if you need to amend this to make this specific to your business, when you download that, you can certainly amend that as well. So some things to consider when looking at this checklist are, do you have a process in place for your workers to report, report any hazards that they identify? So this could be a whiteboard in the workshop, a book in the smoker room, or even regular toolbox talks where safety is discussed. These meetings, they do need to be recorded somewhere and also a date to follow up is needs to be noted. You will also need a process for reporting an incident. As part of work induction, they need to be encouraged and supported to report hazards, near misses and incidents in the workplace. 
Serious incidents need to be recorded under the legislation. As we said, we'll go through those definitions shortly. And minor incidents and near misses should also be recorded so this information can be used to review your systems of work practices to avoid any similar incidents in the future. The reporting system will need to include what action is taken, who is responsible, and also a date for completion. The information provided in these reports will help to identify any trends or patterns of incidents that might be occurring, and will also indicate where action needs to be taken for improvements and changes in the way jobs are done. So notifiable incidents. Sections 35 to 39 of the Workplace Health and Safety Act sets out what sort of incidents are notifiable to Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. So a notifiable incident means one of the following three. It's the death of a person, a serious injury or illness of a person, or a dangerous incident. So there is no need to explain the meaning of a death of a person as this is quite self-explanatory, but we will go through and have a look at the definitions of the other two notifiable incidents. So serious injury or illness. A serious injury or illness requiring a person to seek immediate treatment as an inpatient in hospital is deemed to be a notifiable incident. So this includes immediate treatment for amputation, serious head or eye injury or serious head or eye laceration, serious burns, separation of skin and tissue, which is commonly known as degloving, or a spinal injury or loss of bodily function. Seeking treatment within 48 hours of exposure to a substance such as chemicals is also notifiable to Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. Occupational zoonosis, which are contracted in the course of employment, are also notifiable, and this is important in the agricultural industry where most of your people are exposed to animals and animal-related areas almost on a daily basis. So having contact with animals, animal hides, skin, wool or hair, animal carcass or animal waste products have the potential to cause such zoonosis as Q fever, anthrax, leptospirosis, brucellosis, hendrovirus, avian influenza and cytokosis. So if any of these are contracted in the course of employment, they are automatically deemed to be notifiable to Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. So a dangerous incident. A dangerous incident means an, in, an incident in relation to a workplace that exposes a worker or others to a serious health and safety risk. There is a comprehensive list in the Act, but the ones which would most apply to the agricultural industry are as follows. And that is an uncontrolled escape, spillage or leakage of a substance such as chemicals and fuel. It can be an uncontrolled implosion, explosion or fire. It can also be an electric shock or the fall or release from a height of any plant, substance or thing. Also the collapse or partial collapse of a structure and the collapse or failure of an excavation or of any shoring support of an excavation. So if you refer to section 37 of the Act, that will give you further information as well as list the entire list for you. Uh, one important thing to note there is that for the collapse or partial collapse of a stru structure, under legislation, structure also has a certain meaning. So to have a look at what a structure is under legislation, you need to refer to Schedule 5 under the Workplace Health and Safety Act. So there are also reporting requirements under the Electrical Safety Act and also the regulations. So this includes a serious electrical incident and also a serious electrical event. A serious electrical incident is an incident involving electrical equipment where a person is killed by electricity or receives a shock or injury from electricity, whether or not treated by a doctor. So for further clarification on this, you can find that under the Electrical Safety Act under Section 11. Now for a dangerous electrical event, that encompasses any event that takes place where a person is exposed to electrically unsafe areas and unsafe electrical work. There are six specific definitions for this, which we won't go through today, but for further information, you can refer to the Electrical Safety Act under Section 12. Now, it is very important to note 
that unlike the Workplace Health and Safety Act, which relates specifically to a workplace, the Electrical Safety Act encompasses all electrical incidents, whether or not they are in the workplace or in the home. And of course, there are other notifications. So the person conducting business or undertakings, or the PCBU for short, are also required to notify Workplace Health and Safety Queensland of asbestos removal work, demolition work, or any incidents involving lead or hazardous chemicals. So if you are unsure if you fall into these categories, then you can contact the Workplace Health and Safety Queensland info line, and they will be able to discuss this further and ask certain questions of you to see whether or not it is deemed to be notifiable. So let's go through the steps for reporting the notifiable incidents to Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. So the owner or manager is required to make the notification immediately after becoming aware that a notifiable incident has occurred. So the person conducting the business or undertaking must also keep a record of each notifiable incident for at least five years. And notif notification must be by the fastest possible means. This is usually via a phone call to the info line and that number which is on the screen is 1300 362 128. You can also notify us in writing, whether it's by email, fax or other electronic means. Or you can also complete a form which can be found online at www.worksafe.qld.gov.au. The Workplace Health and Safety Queensland website outlines the options for completing the notification form and also gives you all the options for submitting this to WHSQ. And again, just to reiterate that records of the incident, they must be kept for at least five years from the date of notification. So just to clarify with that, a notification, it may not be deemed to be a notifiable incident straight away as soon as the event occurs. Sometimes it may take one or two days for that to happen. So with your records, they must be kept for five years from the date of notification, which may be different from the date of incident. Now, of course, the previous slides, we were talking all about how to report notifiable incidents. But as we now know, not all incidents and near misses are deemed to be notifiable. So on the screen in front of you now is an example of what an internal incident report form may look like. So this hopefully was sent out to you as well, but it is available on our Workplace Health and Safety Queensland website. And if you're unable to get that, then we will certainly send this out to all participants at the end of the webinar today as well. So as you can see uh, on this form, it has the people involved in the incident, the task that was being done at the time of the incident. It asks for what the contributing factors are and also what corrective actions have been taken, if any. So keep this for future records in case any similar issues happen again. So how do we ensure that all of our incidents and new misses are reported to avoid the incident escalating or causing further incidents? Well, the answer to this question is going to, to depend on you, your business and the people on your property, whether they're workers or visitors. So this could be done as part of a toolbox talk or pre-start meeting or simply by people coming up to you and telling you of any issues that they may have encountered. This is also good to demonstrate consultation with your workers, which of course has been a recurring theme throughout all of the webinars so far. But not all staff in all workplaces may be comfortable with doing this, and not all business and property owners will be in the business 100% of the time. So there may be times where you need to get creative with how you collect all of this information. If staff aren't as forthcoming, or if you are only available out of the normal working hours, maybe you can set up a ballot box where people can report incidents and near misses to you, whether with their name or even anonymously. When they see that these issues are being taken seriously and that they are being fixed, this could also help to improve the relationships on your property and people may feel more confident to come and speak to you in person. You could ask the people involved to email issues through or even text them through to you as well. So this will give people lots of opportunities to report safety issues to you, even if you are not there in person. And remember, the quicker something is reported to you, the quicker it can be resolved. So just to go through and summarise the information that we have been uh, going through in the reporting safety, just make sure that you remember the following things. 
always involve your workers in developing a safety reporting process and check that they understand this process. It's important with all our webinars that we've gone through in your safety management system that your workers fully understand their safety requirements. Record your safety reports and encourage worker participation in reporting hazards that they identify as well as all near misses. Use these safety reports to review policies and procedures including all safe work procedures and report accidents, injuries and illnesses which are deemed to be notifiable. You do have a requirement that they are reported as soon as they are notifiable and make sure you keep your records. Also review and update your responsibilities periodically. And of course, look for continuous improvement and strive to increase your safety in your workplace. And just to recap, remember that consultation is the key to get your people involved in safety practices and to have safe working environments. So I'll hand you back over to Roz now, uh, who will go through some extra information for you. Thanks very much, Brenton. Uh, during the information Brenton just provided to you, we referred to this, some of the sections of the Workplace Health and Safety Act. Uh, these are available to find on our website and I'll give you that address shortly. We've now been through the first five steps of the safety management system. And the next session is scheduled for Tuesday the 6th of December and we'll, this will discuss health and wellbeing in the workplace. Details for registration for this session will be notified through the OB, OB Facebook page and also on our website and Facebook page. The final step in the safety management system, workers' compensation, return to work, will be presented early next year in two webinars by WorkCover Queensland. Keep an eye on the OB and Workplace Health and Safety Queensland Facebook pages for information about dates and registration details for these next sessions. I'd also like to draw your attention to the resources that we have available. We have a lot of resources on our website which are freely available for you to use. There are films, YouTube clips, guides, templates and other information. I'd also like to let you know about the Ride Ready webpage. The Ride Ready webpage aims to reduce the rate of quad bike deaths and injuries and is part of the statewide plan for improving quad bike safety in Queensland. The plan was developed by the Queensland Government as an initiative to raise awareness of the risks associated with quad bike use and improve rider safety skills. So on this uh, web page you can find some information about the quad bike risk profile. You can watch the Ride Ready advertisements. There's also some posters that you can download and these might be useful tools to put up throughout your workplace just to remind your workers about the dangers of riding a quad bike. And there's also a rider challenge, how ride ready are you? There's an opportunity also for you to share your tips on quad bike safety. So go and have a look at those on our website and feel free to send in your tips. All these resources can be used for toolbox talks, training and induction sessions. Showing one of the films followed by a discussion is a good way to get the conversation going about certain safety issues. If you have any problems with accessing this information or you'd like a copy of one of the films on a CD, we can organise that for you as well. So we have time for questions, so if there's any questions coming through, we'll answer those shortly. So up on the slide now, there's the contact information. So our webpage again is www.worksafe.qld.gov.au and the info line number 1300 362-128 and that's an important number for notifying incidences as discussed today. We also have a dedicated email address agriculture at justice.qld.gov.au and you're welcome to send an email through to that and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. So if you need any assistance, need information, want copies of those films or information just uh, send an email to that address and I'll organise to send that out for you. You also have uh, three rural eSafes per year and you can subscribe to the eSafes through our website and you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'll send out the templates from today's session. 
via email to everyone who registered for today. And remember, the next session is on health and wellbeing in the workplace, and this is scheduled for Tuesday the 6th of December. The information for registering will be on the OB Organics and our Facebook pages and our website. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar and please contact us if you would like any more information. We'd be very pleased to hear from you and we look forward to helping you out and we look forward to speaking to you at the next webinar session. Thank you. Excellent. Now, Ros, we don't seem to have any questions coming through, but I just want to uh, reiterate that with the sections of the Act that we have mentioned, some of them are on the slides and some aren't. So I'll make sure that we specifically give you those sections in the follow-up email, as well as exactly what those sections of the Act mean. And again, as Ros said, if you do have any questions after the webinar or after you go back and review any of the other, other webinars that are on the website, you can certainly send through those questions at a later date to the agricultural email address that you have on the screen. Excellent. So if there's no uh, further questions, um, there doesn't seem to be any coming through. So I think that might be the end of it, Ros. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Brenton, and thanks everyone, and we'll talk to you again at the next webinar.